Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Media Watch. I'm your co-host, Eric Tate, on location somewhere out on the east end of Long Island. <laughs> I'm Bob Anthony. I'm Raymond Peterson. And I'm their guest and friend, Alan Singer. Historian and educator, Dr. Alan Singer, is guesting with us. And as usual, we need his expertise because stuff that's happening seems to repeat itself in history. And a lot of it has to do with education. Uh, and we're doing this the Wednesday that uh, Hurricane Ian has basically crashed into Florida somewhere near Fort Myers, Alan. Uh, yes. As almost a category five. Uh, and even though this was one of those slowest and late blooming hurricane season that we've had in a number of years, this was one heck of a storm, right? I had a I had a press trip to that area in a, a few years ago, and uh, it, it's all low lying, and I'm just worried about what's going to uh, come of it. I was in Ponta Gorda, I was in Englewood, I was in Port Charlotte. All of those areas are getting smoked today, as we tape the Wednesday before Monday. I have a cousin in the Myers Tampa area, and he is my age or older. I'm hoping he and his wife have already evacuated because they're 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 up there and i i'm I, i'm saying prayers for them and all the other folks that are in the path of this crazy really big storm so let's keep our fingers crossed they have something to return to when they return one of the things that's happening is the storms are slowing down because of climate change but also because the caribbean and the gulf of mexico are warming these slow storms are picking up energy from the water. They're picking up moisture from the water and they are dumping them on the land. Mm. And this is very scary. Yeah. I have a friend that's hunk hunkering down. Uh, he's somewhere near the Fort Lauderdale area, but he's in an apartment building and he's feeling safe. He didn't want to evacuate. He stocked up on groceries and water and he says he's going to wait it out. Well, fingers crossed by the time we air, whenever we air on, <laughs> this is being brought to you by the good graces of <laughs> EVT Educational Productions, Manhattan Neighborhood Network and Zoom, whenever it airs, wherever we get it up there, hopefully folks will have survived and their property won't be totally destroyed and decimated. But climate deniers, I'm, I'm sorry, but I mean, before we get off this, we need to say something about these climate deniers and, and the fact that uh, the, this bipartisan, non-bipartisan, this total lack of owning up to the true destruction of climate change and what it has wrought uh, should not go unchecked or un, unnoted. Well, Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, who wants to become president of the United States, when he was asked about scientific recommendations on addressing climate change, he charged that that was just a bunch of left-wing things and we're not gonna do left-wing stuff in Florida. Well, now South Florida is gonna suffer the consequences of his ignorance and his arrogance. Yeah. And he's up for re-election now. Ignorance and arrogance. Um, uh, and, and Doug, heels dug in against common sense decision making. Uh, I, you know, I seems to kind of run on that side of the political spectrum uh, these days. Uh, and based on what I'm seeing, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. And a case in point is basically the subject that I want us to dig into in depth in dealing with all these right-wing, primarily right-wing, right-leaning, ultra-right-leaning advocacy groups that are behind the ongoing upsurge in book banning that's sweeping the country. Uh, and mm -hmm. I know we said we need to dig into this because it's crucial across the board. Uh, uh, the uh, literary organization Penn, like, pen in a pen yeah, yeah. Uh, they recently issued a major report about this rise in book banning and, and they, they sure did uh, i have some of their statistics Go ahead, Ray. Uh, 
we say uh, overall there were 2,532 incidences of book banning across the United States. In this uh, past year? Um, they apparently, yes, this wow. past year. They specifically point out the school year, the 2021-22 school year, mm. where there were a total of 1,648 unique book titles that were banned in, in that school year. Uh, they, they previous, that's the latest report. They previously had a report in April that listed 1,586 instances of individual books banned, affecting 1,145 titles in 86 school districts across 26 states. Uh, interestingly enough, in the uh, April report, Texas came out as number one with 713 bans. Florida, remarkably, came in at three with only 204. So it's, um, it, it's, it's getting pretty, it's becoming politicized. Uh, local groups, there are more than 300 local groups. Uh, one of the most prominent being, what was the uh, Mothers for Liberty <laughs> were the biggest movers. Uh, as I was telling Alan earlier, their about them statement is uh, they are they are ready to fight those that stand in the way of liberty, which I find kind of interesting because they're trying to destroy First Amendment rights of people. Uh, it's just um, those numbers are just staggering to me. I mean, I knew it was pervasive. I had no idea that it was that pervasive. Uh, it's being politicized. Groups are trying to get their clergymen in on this. They're doing. They're spreading it via popular media, Facebook, and what have you. They're putting these lists out. People are picking them up, and they're beating the drum uh, blindly. It seems in a lot of cases, and uh, of course. Because, because communities are getting behind this, politicians are falling in line behind them to, to energize their base. So we've got a lot of GOP uh, congressmen just jumping on this for only the reason of gaining a political base. I, ha I have an interesting quote here um, from the individual, and I'm quoting from the Penn Report, the individual behind the Trump administration executive order that inspired many of these uh, bills man is Manhattan Institute senior fellow Christopher Rufo, who acknowledges that he intentionally uses the label of to rally political support, intentionally uses the label of CRT, critical race theory, which, quote, is the perfect villain and a useful, quote, again, brand category to build opposition to progressive perceived, to progressives perceived dominance of American educational institutions. So we've got there, we've got somebody from the administration, the previous administration, actually saying this is we this is a concerted effort on our part. We we profile Christopher Rufo on Media Watch more than once. And because he's the guy who decided to use CRT as the club and the cudgel to try to rile up the rank and file base in the name of quote, what's it, parental control, parental rights on making sure they control wow. what their children are being taught, age appropriate. Uh, Bob, wasn't there something from the Sankofa uh, email folks who were talking about the Banned Books Week that's an annual event that folk have now begun to try to use as a pushback in a concerted effort to spotlight the fact that this is a politically based, politically driven thing that's impinging on the rights of other parents who want to make sure their kids are exposed to some of these books and these issues, whether it's LGBTQ issues, whether it's about people trying to come to terms with whether they're binary or non-binary as far as who they are as a person, mm -hmm. what, what's the, 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 the background on the pushback? Well, uh, like you said, Eric, uh, a number of libraries are, uh, I can't say celebrating, I guess you can call it commemorating uh, this uh, Banned Books Week, 
by pointing out that the thoughtful uh, award-winning uh, historically supported uh, works that are now being banned uh, all over the place. And uh, Sankofa, I guess that's a Washington-based uh, video and cafe, et cetera, but they're, 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 they're way out there on social media, everybody. Holly Jerima, I think, owns and runs that bookstore and film video cafe, yes. Oh, excellent, excellent. I mean, they, 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 they've, you know, this is not a Johnny come lately. Mm -mm. They put out a, a very interesting list of some of the banned books or the books that have been challenged. Mm -hmm. And 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 when you look at some of the author's names, and I'll just rattle some of them off, mm -hmm. Toni Morrison, Richard Wright, Alice Walker, Maya Angelou, Nicole Hannah-Jones. Now she's getting so she got so many accolades for the 1619 project, but of course that's the one they go after mm -hmm. when they allege CRT. The, new, the newest one they're going after. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, but uh, we, these are all black authors that you're citing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. These are authors of color. Uh, these are all black authors that I've rattled off so far, and and they're the ones that are being pulled. And uh, you know, these are super intelligent, thoughtful people being challenged by basically the ignorant and the ones who would rather us not open our minds. We all, everyone in this Zoom knows the value of an, of an education. I mean, we've all benefited by opening our minds to other ways of thinking. That's exactly what the, op that's the ex exact opposite of what they're driving at with well, these book bans. Well, Alan, and, uh, that's exactly why um, slave owners didn't want the slaves to be able to read. Yeah. Yeah. God help them. They might get smart. Alan, I mean, as it's... an educator, you understand what the nuance is as an educator who educates other people to become teachers, what the challenge the teacher has to face on making sure they have age appropriate reading material for the subjects, for their students. And uh, the, the smoke screen that these people seem to be raising is these are concerned parents who worry that their children are being indoctrinated with sexual pedophilia and all kinds of crazy nonsense, address that issue of what they're doing, what they're trying to camouflage for their arguments, and then put it in the historical context of how this harks back to all that fascistic fascism and all that stuff that we seem to be seeing running rampant now. Well, first of all, no one reads a book and then gets recruited to be LGBTQ plus, uh -oh. just outrageous. Alan. And certainly, you don't get, you don't read a book, and all of a sudden you become black. I mean, this is uh, outrageous. What these people want to do is they, it's not they're protecting their children, they want to censor everybody else's children. So what they're saying, one parent in a class raises an objection, and 32 kids can't read the book. And uh, again, they're targeting black authors. They're also targeting LGBTQ plus authors. Mm -hmm. They, you know, we, Ray and I were joking. They call themselves mothers for, um, for mothers liberty, for but liberty, they yeah. change their name to mothers against liberty or maybe mothers for bigotry. Um, one of the books that they had been banned also by a black author is The Hate You Give which discusses a police officer shooting an unarmed young black mm -hmm. teenage boy. And they're saying it's anti-police. Yeah, my granddaughter, who's white, read the book as a teenager in school in New York, was so impressed with the book that she had me read it with her. Mm -hmm. And again, it, 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 it's a book for uh, young people. It's a very powerful book. It's a very powerful story. It's become a very powerful movie. Mm -hmm. This should be available. It doesn't brainwash anybody. The what what I found interesting and you know, scary in some ways is you know, uh, one of the books that, that it's being banned in Pennsylvania is a book on called a series called Girls Who Code, and apparently the Mothers for Liberty don't want girls to learn how to code. <laughs> but banning books and burning books has a, a long history around the world. You know, one of the first recorded instances was in 200 BC, when the Chinese emperor had a giant bonfire of books that he didn't like. When, when the Romans conquered the Greek library in Alexandria, 
one of the first things they did was burn it. England actually burned the US Library of Congress during the War of 1812, but probably the most notorious book burners were Nazi Germans, yeah. who in the 1930s burned books by Jewish authors. But this is still going on. Uh, an al Qaeda is Islamicist in Mali burned books that they didn't like, including manuscripts that were hundreds of years old. And then Sinhalese Buddhists in Sri Lanka burned the libraries of Tamil this, uh, books. So we're just looking at this horrible history of trying to suppress people from learning anything. And it's not just that they're not trying to protect their children because they could just tell their children not to read it. They're trying to ban everyone's children. And that's fascistic. And also, you know, these legislators are trying to pass laws that will fine librarians and booksellers, uh, not only fine them, up to the extent of jailing them if they continue. And, and you know, the Brooklyn Public Library has a exemplary campaign. They are posting banned books on their website and they are making them available. Any person around the United States can access those books and they really need to be praised for that. Yeah. Not just praise, but if you do go to the banned book section of the Brooklyn Public Library, and I'm not pumping up their 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 uh, donations, mm -hmm. but there's a donation button. They de they deserve a little uh, yeah. something for what they're doing. Uh, Alan, you wrote that piece about how Oklahomans should be mm -hmm. some Oklahomans <laughs> should be ashamed, and you pointed out this case, and I'm personally insulted that a teacher should be challenge for making the Brooklyn Public Library's banned ebook collection uh, available to her students. She's being skewered for, you know, as if this availability is somehow poisoning the local children. I'm personally insulted by that. Uh, I mean, the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Public Library, uh, you know, they have their issues, but this is not one of them. This is something they're doing right. And they, and that that teacher should not be assaulted, well, not assaulted, uh, uh, Alan, have her have her career threatened by this? Yeah, Alan. Alan, give us a little bit more on that Oklahoma teacher and what she's up against. Can you can you can you do that? Well, first, this is my Brooklyn Public Library card. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a member of that subversive organization. <laughs> now, what happened in Oklahoma? She was an English teacher. She didn't require students to read the books. All she did was inform them about this program of the Brooklyn Public Library so that if they wanted to see the books, they could if they were unavailable in a local library or in the school library. Again, um, someone who was running for office used this as an ability to challenge her. And this person who challenged her had a long history of religious fanaticism. And, but the board took up the challenge and the teacher has now said, I may quit because I can't be the teacher I want to be. And when this happens, it puts teachers all across the country. They come frightened because they say, well, I don't want to be the next person who's featured on Fox News and is getting she, death threats. Is she facing, yes, is she facing not just death threats, but also possible termination just yeah. because of that? We, I need to stress the fact that just doing her job has caused her death threats and now possible loss of her revenue, of her well, job. In this 2008, I was, I was on Fox News defending on um, Obama and uh, against ridiculous attacks. And I got death threats. I mean, as soon as you appear in the right wing media, you get all of these kinds of threats and people don't afraid of that. Yeah, um, 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 for me, this goes to the heart of why so many people on January 6th were storming the Capitol, because somebody had said to them, oh, our freedom are being challenged. Our mm -hmm. elections are being stolen. We have been put in a trick bag by these Democratic leaning people who have stolen X, Y, and Z. The same kind of big lie yeah. 
about the election is the lie that they're speaking to the issue of education about teachers putting children. Some teachers are being accused of pedophilia. Yeah. Some teachers have had criminal charges filed against them by local parents reporting them to the police. Now, the police, in some instances, have done an investigation job and said, there's nothing here. Stop doing that. And some people just said, that's not even worth our time. But the fact that a teacher is, or even a librarian, because I know the Library Institute has also put out a whole bunch of papers about the fact that their librarians have had their lives threatened just because they're in the job of advocating the accessibility in a public library, in a particular locality, books be accessible. Never mind that politicians want to put them on a list. The librarians are saying, this is a public library. These books are accessible to people who have the card, et cetera, et cetera. They're facing death threats. And some of them brought up on charges of aiding pedophilia and pornography and all this craziness. We need to speak to that issue on what's going on politically and what it means to this country as a democratic, attempted democratic nation. In Connecticut, a teacher isn't being investigated, an English teacher for distributing a vocabulary sheet that defined terms like critical race theory, didn't advocate anything. It defined them so that when students read the newspaper, they know what the terms mean. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that teacher is now being investigated. I mean, well, you're, you're, talking, you're talking about <clears throat> me, words. They're trying to, they're, they're using words like equality, diversity, and inclusion, identity, multi, uh, multiculturalism, and prejudice are being railed against. You know, it, it, it's insane. And the other thing is, you don't have to ban a book, you can challenge a book. And in challenging a book, that's like, just editing out offensive words, uh, maybe an offensive chapter, such as, you know, an R-rated movie going to TV, and they edit out the, the swear words, and, or they might remove a particularly violence or sexual scene, but the movie is still there. You still get the basic idea. So just eliminating the book in itself is just totally absurd. Who's doing the challenge? That's my question, Ray. That's where we're- where... they're, they're not even challenging them. They're trying to remove them. I'm just saying, like Alan, we're talking about the woman in Oklahoma, where mm. the person who raised the challenge is somebody who's actually a known religious anti whatever kook that's known for craziness, but the teacher was still challenged nonetheless. You have people like Christopher Rufo using CRT to rile up moms against or moms for whatever those crazy moms for liberty. Stuff. yeah well she moms moms for direct, yeah. they are a direct outgrowth of christopher rufo's crt camp yeah and they're okay. one of the biggest moms. so i'm just saying penn is talking about the fact that everybody out here needs to recognize that this is a politically based politically driven yeah. assault on people's right to the freedom of expression to write and the freedom to read. And because it's politically based, there needs to be a distinct definition of who these challenges, challengers are, what the challenges are, and how to push back to protect the rights of the students, the rights of the teachers, the rights of the librarian. And I'm asking this group, how do we help make that pushback and make it safer for those individuals? I mean, we, we have to discredit the people and, and point them out and discredit the people who are spreading just the flat out wrong information. I was watching a gu gubernatorial ad out of uh, Wisconsin and uh, it was talking about showing uh, 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 preschoolers uh, films about trans transgender. It, it was so off the rail wrong mm -hmm. that they were still using it in a political ad. Mm -hmm. And you know the people see that over dinner and a lot of people believe it. We need to point out the people who are just spreading the BS. So politically, Bob, who was that candidate? What party uh, was, was he from? I'm sorry? Who was the uh, candidate? What party was he from? 
Well, he was from the GOP. I have to double check to make sure it was him and not the lieutenant governor or anybody else. I don't want to call right. out somebody by mistake, but it was definitely GOP. That's why I'm asking, because yes. this stuff seems to be coming from the pseudo Republicans. I call them pseudo Republicans because what used to be a Republican Party is no longer a Republican Party. I, just like we used to say, Donald Trump is a Russian operative. Donald Trump is a liar. Donald Trump is all the stuff that he was that the rest of the media wouldn't call out. We called him out on Media Watch. We're calling the GOP out on Media Watch, just like we did Donald Trump. It's no longer the GOP. It's the MAGA whacked out party. <laughs> and so those are the people that are causing headaches for educators, librarians, teachers trying to do their job. No pulling punches, no, oh, some people, no, it's the GOP. The advocacy groups, the article that I read that talked about the Penn report said 95%, I forgot the numbers, are from the far right. There are a couple of left pushes about people didn't like the use of racial language and curse words or something from the far left, a couple of percentage. But the 98% of this stuff was coming from the far right advocacy groups. And we need to call that out. And, 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 and we, have about, we have about a minute and a half left. Can I just uh, throw a quick point? Because it, it's, it, it's really, it's worse than even that. In Georgia, the former football player, Herschel Walker, was trailing in the polls. So he's now launched a campaign attacking trans youth. But what, how is he attacking them? He claims, I, I gotta turn that off, I'm sorry. He, he claims that when they get to heaven, Jesus won't be able to recognize them because they're trans. Okay. In New York, Lee Zeldin, the Republican candidate for governor, is defending Hasidic schools whose graduates are illiterate in English and math because they don't teach them secular subjects. And Lee Zeldin is campaigning that he's going to defend their right not to educate children. So okay. he, again, another GOP candidate. Um, on that note. I think we're out of time. And so we have, we, we have about 30 seconds. <laughs> OK, <laughs> in 30 seconds, I, all I can say is we got our work cut out for us, folks, in order to get people to stay well educated. And we need to keep calling out all the wacko MAGA GOP ish used to be GOP people who are not trying to do right by our democracy. That's me. I don't want to call it a soapbox. I just want to say we're calling it like it is. This has been Media Watch. I'm your co-host, Eric Tate. I'm Bob Anthony. Catch up to us on Twitter and YouTube at Media Watch EVT. I'm Raymond Peterson. And I'm their friend and guest, Alan Singer. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks a lot, Dr. Singer. And folks, we'll catch you the next time. Stay safe. I'm trying to do that out here. <laughs>